do this Goodwill outlet haul. You can't see it, but I have my huge Hulk in here. Almost everything I'm going to show you cost me a dollar with the exception of a couple of things. And I'll show you those and I'll let you know. I freaking love this little tea set. Um, I did film a YouTube short slash TikTok slash something video. If you are new around here, you guys, you should check out those little short form videos that I post. I post them almost daily here on this channel. I also post them on Instagram where I just pick up things. I tell you like what they're selling for. I check comps with you. Um, I give you reselling tips. They're like quick little 30 to 60 second videos. Usually people that like the longer form content videos don't watch the short form content. But I think a lot of the stuff is helpful and I post it almost daily. So you might want to check it out. But I do have a short form video coming up of me finding this. I think this is adorable. I want to keep it. But I have enough tea sets. So you have your tea cup, your little teapot, and your little... It's just adorable. It is Stetchel. Stetchel. Gracie China. Um, I can't tell if it's new or not. Like, it looks brand new to me, but then there's a couple little dings on the plate. So I'm not going to list it as new. I found some sold comps on this exact set anywhere from like $30 to $40. I love selling hard goods, you guys. They're just so easy to photograph. They're easy to list. What I feel, what I know to be true after many years of doing this, hard goods, most hard goods, easier to photograph and list, more of a pain to ship. Like, I really have to bubble wrap this wrap it in paper sometimes if things are super fragile i'll actually double box it so like for this i would wrap this in paper separate the pieces like even this piece wrap it in paper then bubble wrap it then sometimes i'll use um packing peanuts styrofoam i reuse a lot of um packaged packing stuff that I get from my own packages like stuff I order from Amazon or liquidation like liquidation I get a lot of packing packing stuff that way and I'll do that and then sometimes I'll put this like in a tiny box put more uh, paper around it and put it in a bigger box but this one I don't think I need to do that especially since I can separate all the pieces but I just thought this was adorable and it's really once you get used to shipping hard goods you guys it's not as annoying or it's not as scary i should say as it would be when i first started like i would never ever pick that up like 10 12 years ago when i first started reselling because i was just mortified of shipping that stuff so um yeah we'll see how that goes uh waif i always call it waif i think this stands for where are you from i looked it up many moons ago size eight sold it uh is this an eight or a small i think it's a small wait a minute i'm not a size small i thought this said size eight i tried this on um and it fit me i'm not small i must run a little big this one uh looks like goodwill had it listed they had it for sale for 9.99 it didn't sell so it ended up at the goodwill outlet you guys super cute i'm gonna try to sell this on a live sale first but if it doesn't sell I do okay selling this brand when I list it. It just sits so long. So maybe if this doesn't sell in a live sale, I might actually take it to my local consignment store and see if they want it. I'm doing a huge drop off um, at my local consignment store. I was, you guys, I am filming this at 4 p.m. and it's bright as heck outside and people are still doing fireworks. By the way, fireworks are legal in Southern California. Not legal, I'm sorry, they are illegal in Southern California. And when I tell you, we heard fireworks until 3 a.m. in my neighborhood. <laughs> it was on the news. Everybody was like, yeah, so you make fireworks illegal in Southern California, and this is what the city looks like. And it's just lit up with fireworks everywhere. A mess. Banana Republic, you guys know one of my favorite mall brands. If you didn't know, I love selling. Banana Republic, J. Crew, and Taylor. They're some of my bread and butter brands, you guys. This knit sweater retailed for over $100. This one does need some stain treating. Looks like there's some makeup on the back. But I am always thinking a season ahead. I'm filming this in July. I need sweaters already. So this was at Goodwill for $6.99. And it didn't sell. I got it for a dollar. And it's, I think it's 100% cotton. Uh, oh, 60 cotton, 20 viscose, 20 nylon. Um, I am 
Well, I have so much stuff to tell you guys. The Bolo group, not the Bolo group, the Bolo free Bolo list is always linked down below, you guys. It's free. Oh my God. I don't know if you guys can hear the fireworks. All you have to do is give me your email and you'll be on my email newsletter and I will only email you once a week. But the, um, the sourcing group has actually launched. I will link it down below. Uh, quite a few of you literally joined the first day. Um, some of you were asking me in the YouTube comments like what makes my group different from other sourcing groups because the sourcing group is not free you guys it takes me a lot of time and energy to do that group i am in it daily multiple times a day so i thought i would respond here i don't know if you're watching but i'll also respond to your youtube comments too but i could be more descriptive here so the sourcing group basically you guys i am scouring the internet myself looking for deals for you guys so i'm going to be in the group I was, I was going to say initially, I told you guys I won't be in there daily. I'm already in there every day, multiple times a day, looking for links to provide you guys for opportunities for sourcing. Now, of course, and I put the disclaimer in the group, I can't guarantee that everything that I provide you, you're going to make a million bucks or you're going to make, you know, a ton of money. Reselling is such a roller coaster. Things change, but I really try to find brands, styles, items that can make you guys money that you can flip for a profit and so i'm going to keep the group small because i want it to be as beneficial for everybody as possible so that's one part of the group every day i'm providing you at least five more links right now the group is small so i can do like five to ten but as we grow my goal is to have a moderator and we're putting in like over 20 30 40 however many links we need to get you guys some good deals as possible so basically i'm doing the online arbitrage research for you i'm also scouring the internet looking for deals that you can buy from liquidation companies we're also building a little group so that you guys that join the group if you I've, I use this as an example because this happened to me. I am in another person's sourcing group where they have about 200 members and uh, like five of those people work at really popular liquidation companies. So what they'll do is they'll be like, hey, we have these pallets coming up. Do any of you guys want to grab these before we open it up to the public? So I want to open a section like that. That's coming soon. So one part is I'm sourcing for you basically every day seven days a week that's gonna go in the group number two I have another thing that runs to basically get you guys some insider deals on I'm trying to say this without giving too much away because I feel like people in the group probably don't want me telling people not in the group <laughs> But it's basically, I have some AI running that is going to be alerting us in the group when things that are normally out of stock that are super coveted go in stock so that we can get it before everybody else does. That's basically the best way I can say it without giving too much away because members in the group have specifically said like Nikki we don't want the group to get like out of hand and have 500 people because then it's going to be harder to get the deal so can you not like tell everything so I want to explain to you what that is, but I think that's the best way to say it without giving it away if you're not part of the group. I have an AI machine running that alerts the group immediately when things um, for resellers that are out of stock go in stock, basically. So that's always running and that always alerts the group. That runs 24-7, seven, seven days a week, 365. So you're going to have that benefit, plus you're going to have me in there daily doing that. And then the goal is to grow the group so that we have enough members in there that because a lot of people you guys a lot of resellers you may not know this i've learned it just from doing this for so long a lot of resellers also work at companies where you can source or companies that provide liquidation companies that provide bulk wholesale and so if you make those connections with these people you can kind of get first dibs on things before it goes out to the masses so i would like to grow that section of the group but i think that's in the future because right now the group is just so small but those are the two things that are happening right now in the group and that's the benefit and honestly if you just buy one or two things that would cover one item one flip would cover the monthly fee the group is 25 bucks a month it's never going to go higher than that well i shouldn't say that i mean i hope i my goal is to never make it more expensive than that i can like 99 percent 
certainty tell you that unless like something happens like I don't know like maybe my AI becomes like two million dollars a month or something but that's my goal and I think it's your the benefit of the group well outweighs the cost of it so we've just started we're small but mighty but that's the group in a nutshell I don't I'm gonna try not to talk about it too much but I think it would be really beneficial for a lot of you if you check it out and the good thing is you guys you can cancel at any time you're not even if you pay for a month you can just cancel you don't have to stay in it if you feel like oh this isn't really for me you just cancel at any time and you're good to go so that's my spiel on the sourcing group that's what makes mine a little special I feel like um, I'm really transparent you guys it's not like a mentorship group like if you have questions of course I'll try to answer them but it's really about sourcing the group is about getting you guys inventory at the best deals that I can possibly find. And if you guys find deals, I have in the group where you guys, the members, have the capability to post links, you can you can chat, so maybe you guys find deals that you wanna share. My goal is to build a community within our YouTube community um, to just help each other out because that, I've always told you guys, that is the number one question I get. How can I get inventory if my location where I live stinks? Or how do I get more inventory? I work full time. How can I get more inventory? Um, I have a disability. I can't travel a lot, but I want to resell. Like that is literally the number one question I get. So that's why I got the idea to do this group. And it's like my little baby. I'm cherishing it. I want to take care of you guys. And I think you guys will find it helpful. It is very time consuming for me. So I'm being realistic that if the group grows to a certain point, I'm going to hire help. But I think that's just even better for the members because then you have more opportunities to get inventory. So that's what the group is, you guys. From now on, from now on, you will see it linked in every video. Give it a try if you're interested. If it doesn't, if you don't like it, it's not for you. You can cancel at any time. All right, Levi's. I've been. I thought I would never say this. I have been loving selling jeans and shorts, you guys. Five years ago, if you've been around here for a while, you know I never used to touch shoes, I never used to touch jeans, I didn't want to do measurements, but the profit margins for these things are great. Just today I sold two Levi's jeans for over $30 that I got for a dollar. The profit margin is great. You do have to do measurements though, but I think, I'm like, come on Nikki, if you have to take 30 seconds to do measurements, big deal to make the great profit. So I picked up these Levi's, these are the 514, uh, waist 31, length 32. These are in really good condition. They're the slim straight. I don't know that I've ever found these before because for years I have been ignoring freaking jeans, jean shorts, like anything that had to do with jeans, you guys, I was ignoring that. Poo poo on me. Rachel Roy. Oh, Rachel Roy. I remember years ago, many, many years ago, I used to get excited to find this brand. Not so much anymore. I thought this would be a cute life cell piece. It's a really pretty floral print, flowy skirt, fully elastic waistband. It's a size extra small, but this would easily fit a size small. So I'm going to try to sell that live. If it doesn't sell, then I will take it to Crossroads. If you see anything you're interested in, most of this stuff, I shouldn't say most of it. A lot of this stuff I'm going to put in a live sale, but also some of it I'm going to list. So always check my Poshmark closet. It'll either get listed or if you are interested, come get a deal at the live sale. You guys, I told you I will sell anything. I looked this up and I found a sold comp for $40. He needs a little cleaning up. Um, I'm going to use my grandma's cleaner. It's a spray I get on Amazon. It is amazing for spot cleaning or like um, spot cleaning or stain treating and then washing it so I'm gonna spot treat him he's the he's my first Snoopy so it's like supposed to be a baby's little first oh my god their little first stuffed animal it's so cute it's so adorable I can't have baby fever I just had a baby a year ago I need to relax but I just thought that was so cute so I'm gonna give him some love and stain treat him he's poly polyester fibers does it say if he can be washed Usually you can't wash these, right? I don't know. But I'm going to clean him up. He's freaking adorable. He has a couple little stains like on his feet. I don't know if you'll be able to see. There you go. Right there. So I'm going to just spot treat that. And then he has one right there and right there. And if I can get it out, I'll list it. Because other than that, he's in really good condition. All right. Next we have... 
I didn't know that Vicky, is it Vichy? Vicky? This brand, you know they make really cute sexy dresses and stuff. Sometimes it's sold at Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom. They did a collaboration with Haley, which I guess is a blogger. This is a cute little cutout dress. Um, really stretchy, ribbed. I actually do okay selling this brand. I've sold it live. I've sold this brand everywhere. I've sold it live, eBay, Poshmark, whatnot, the real real, not the real real, um, thread up, and I've sold it to my local consignment store. Um, it's a pretty popular brand. You do need to check comps. They have so many different styles, you guys. But their dresses can go up to like 100, 150. I think that's the most I've ever seen. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Have you ever seen their dress for more than that? Uh, but they make very sexy, trendy uh, dresses. And I guess they did a collaboration. So I'll have to look that up. Um, I've listed that brand. I've, I've listed it. I've sold it. I've sold that brand everywhere, seriously. Uh, this is a Be Tempted, which is uh, Walk Coles, like more affordable bra line. Walk Coles are pretty expensive. Intimates line. This retailed for $35. Really pretty um, pink, stretchy bralette. No padding or wiring. I think I'm going to actually, it's new with the tags. I think I'm going to actually use that as a giveaway. I love giving away like actual clothing, especially if I can find it new because people just love it and you can use it for whatever you want and it's free this is temptation never heard of this but it's made in india and it has fringe and you know anything with fringe or sparkle or glitter i'm like ooh, what's that um it's so it's floor it's like a floral kimono semi sheer and it has fringe all over it i do really well selling stuff like this and live sales they love kimonos in the live sales. This is so cute. So we'll see. I'll try to sell this live. This is another one um, that if it doesn't sell live, I will probably take to Crossroads. Crossroads is my local um, consignment store. I did film at the bins this day, you guys, but it was so hot. <laughs> they don't have air conditioning there. So I filmed like short form videos. Usually I'll film for you guys so you guys can see, but I was just so hot, you guys. I got these little swim trunks for my kiddo. They're a size six. He's only three, but he is huge <laughs> and he's very tall. And I'm pretty sure these will fit him this summer. So I'm gonna wash those, get that to him. I recently mentioned this somewhere in some video to you guys. I film all the time, so I forget. This is Offline by Aerie. I got these at the Goodwill outlet like two months ago and they sold within three weeks. These exact leggings, they are wide leg, um, they're fold over, they're super soft, they're a size small, they're the OG fold over super flare high rise. When I tell you this got so much attention and I was like, really? I almost threw these back the first time I found them at the Goodwill outlet. Um, cause I was like, eh, like who wants airy leggings? Airy has had like a total comeback. I don't know. Maybe they never went away. I just remember them being really popular when I was like in high school and then I never heard of them again. Maybe it's just cause I left high school, <laughs> but now I feel like everybody's back. Like people my age are like, Oh, I want to get the airy leggings. I'm like, really? Anyways, they're super soft and stretchy. Um, these ones, they're not in the best condition like the other ones were so I'm just gonna notate that they're a little bit faded they have a little bit of pilling but they're still like they have life left you know what I mean so I just I, when that happens you guys I'm just honest I just tell people like look there's some fading there's some pilling but it's got a lot of life left this is just a random um boutique brand and it's brand new with the tags it is super soft and stretchy it literally feels like lululemon aligned fabric it's a long maxi wow this is really long i'm five six it goes past my toes this is a size medium i thought this would be a cute dress for me to wear and it's new with the tags super soft stretchy perfect little summer dress and summer su during summertime you guys i live in shorts dresses and skirts if you have thick thighs, you will understand. I cannot, re I refuse to wear pants once the temperature, <laughs> once the temperature hits over 80, 
that's it. These thighs, I can't. I can't. It's just too hot and sweaty. I've had thick thighs my whole life. I cannot. <laughs> so look, basically from June through like mid-September, shorts, dresses, skirts, that's it. This I got new with the tags. Ayla? Uh, I always butcher it. A-L-Y-A. Ayla? Whatever. This is a Francesca's brand. This is brand new with the tags. Retails $54. Super soft, stretchy, size large cardigan. I used to confuse this brand, and I used to actually tell you guys this. This brand with that brand that sold, it's similar to this, and it sold at like Bloomingdale's, Neiman Marcus. What is it called? It's A something YA. I don't know. I always used to confuse this one with that one. And it was actually one of you guys like three years ago. It was like, um, Nikki, that's Francesca's brand. I love you guys. You always call me out. You're like, girl, that's not sold at Bloomingdale's. That's sold at Francesca's. What is Francesca's, by the way? We don't have them here. I've never seen it here. Um, is it in an actual store? Or is it just an online store? I know you guys have told me about it, but I've never seen like a brick and mortar store. So I don't know. Is it just an online store? Um, anyways, this is super cute. It's very long. I'm 5'6", and it almost touches my ankles. So I definitely picked that up. I am a sucker, you guys. Anytime I find something new with tags at the Goodwill outlet, I almost always pick it up, even if it's, it's Forever 21, and it's probably to my detriment. But I'm like, this is new. I can save this. I sell so many different places. There has to be somewhere I can sell this because if Forever 21 is not new, baby, I'm not looking at it. <laughs> if H&M is not new or super trendy, I'm not looking at it. But if it's new with the tags, like even Shein, I'll be like, well... It's not the Goodwill outlet. I don't want it to go to the landfill. And sometimes I still own that stuff like 80 million years later. This one broke my heart. This is one I did make a video on. This is Helmet Lang, a very expensive brand. Size small. I was so excited to see this, you guys, because I found it in a bin that was super picked over. And then I realized why, why it was still there. It has these tiny, tiny holes on the back I don't there you go you can see them one two three um so I thought this would be a good experiment for me to try and do the whole repair myself my dry cleaner will actually do whole repair he does a very good job he does it a lot for me on cashmere like I gave him a Prada cashmere sweater that I found at a consignment store for 20 bucks it had like three big holes and I, I actually found two I think it came from the same person. I listed both of them. One sold for 200 and the other one is still listed. And he did a great job. And in the listing, you guys, I just notate. I say the cashmere was damaged. I did have it professionally pre repaired. Please see photo and close-ups. And you can kind of see from afar, you can't see. But up close, you can kind of see the tiny, tiny patch detail. But I thought since I only paid a dollar for this, I should try to do it myself. I've seen so many YouTube videos on it. So... Maybe I'll do a video on it. This was made in the USA, 52 cotton, 48 polyester. I thought this would be a good little like experiment for me because if I screw it up, I'm only out a dollar. You know what I mean? And if it's great, then I can sell it. And I found comps on that exact shirt for anywhere from like 40 to $70. You have to be careful with that brand, Helmet Lang. Very expensive retail, but the resale value is like all over the place. So just... uh friendly tip from Nikki to you. That's some of the things. I have so many ideas of things I want to email you guys on the email list. I just want to share like tips about different brands. Maybe I would, you know, give you a list of like, these are the brands that retail for a lot, but the resale value. And maybe I'll put in a couple comps in the email and here's the proof. Like that's what I want to do. The email list, you guys, I just that email list I just launched a week ago and we already have almost 300 of you on the email list. So I'm really excited about growing that community. I told you guys, I just want to build little communities within our community because so many of you are subscribed and I know I'm that type of subscriber. I never comment. I never say anything. And so many of you I know that will comment occasionally have been telling me like, I would love to be a part of your newsletter. Like I would love to join your group. So that's part of the reason I've created these things. And I have all these ideas that I want to send and talk to you guys about, but I promised you I'm only going to email you once a week. So I'm going to stick to that. Unless you guys like 
collectively as a group start emailing me like hey Nikki you can send me two emails a week I don't mind I've never heard of this brand I'm assuming this is like a little boutique men's brand it's Zeno Vizio Zeno Vizio Z-I-N-O-V-I-Z-O -I -I -O, size large case in point new with the tags never heard of this brand I didn't even look it up I was just like this is new with the tags somebody will want this I'm probably going to take this to uh, Crossroads and they'll probably take it they take most of the stuff I take them you guys that's new with the tags they take from me they'll take forever 21 the only time I can remember that them like they rejected something new with tags was like Shein but sometimes they'll take it sometimes they don't it really just depends on the person um one time I went to Crossroads you guys I took one bin it had 40 items in it I went to one Crossroads location the girl literally took nothing and I was there at that location when they opened mine open at 11 she took nothing she's like yeah my manager said we don't really need this we don't really need that I was like all right whatever and I had some good stuff in there I took it to the next location I was there by like 12 so they'd have been open for an hour and they took so much stuff and they paid me out $180 so don't get discouraged you guys if you have the time i will say especially where i live with traffic and parking if you live in a major city it is a time suck like driving there parking traffic like it can be but that's why i only do it twice a month now i dedicate twice a month i will go to two different locations on one day and that's it because it can be time consuming but it really just depends on the person so if you go to like one store and they don't take anything or they take a couple things or they give you a poor amount try one more if you have the time because that really opened my eyes I'm not newer to selling at consignment stores but I am newer to doing it so regularly um, the first six months of 2024 I was going weekly I've just cut back because I need some time back so I'm now I'm doing it uh, once every other week but I'm just learning I've learned over these last couple of months that it really just depends on the person so try a couple couple different spots you know what I mean because one person may take nothing and then the next person might take everything it's just really fascinating anywho Brooks Brothers a brand I love selling this is an extra fine Italian merino wool sweater vest this is size medium i didn't find any holes at all which is actually shocking this just has some pilling i need to be really careful because this fabric is really fine really soft and i don't want to like destroy it but sold comps on this look really good and it is super soft and stretch is this men's or women's i thought this was men's this is men's right but now that i'm looking at it this one will be easy to find on Google image so I'll probably find that this is funny here's a funny story about this years ago I was at the Goodwill outlet and they rolled out like five bins of this brand all new with the tags oh this isn't it I was gonna tell you about these $300 pants I found at the Goodwill outlet but I'll save that story because this is not it you guys this is actually a piece that I had the real real send back to me. This is Moschino. Moschino. I used to call this Mos Moschino. I think it's Moschino. Oh yeah, yeah. I butchered the names. Um, this is made in Italy. This is a size six. This was listed on their website. It is a like satiny um, tube top dress. You've got the jewels on the back. This was listed on their website for like 150 days and it got to the point where they had marked it down like to $40 and I was like absolutely not give it back. I'm part of their VIP seller thing. I don't know what it's called you guys but I've sold so much on there that I have like a concierge person that I can text and stuff. So I was like can you give me my dress back? <laughs> um, I think it's free. My camera just cut me off and it was like maximum recording time. How long have I been talking to you guys? I better speed this up. Who knows how long this video is. Um, I think if I got to look up the rules because I never request stuff back before they charge you. But I think if you leave it on their site, I don't know, let's say it's 30 or 60 days and then you want it back, they don't charge you. But I think if you request it back before a certain time frame, if anyone lets, knows, let me know. 
um, then you might have to pay a, like a shipping fee or something. So I'm going to get this listed and sell, sell it myself, you guys. I do this all the time. I will try so many avenues, little tip for me to you, of selling things before I get rid of it. So I got that. I sent it to the real real. They listed it at a couple hundred bucks. It didn't sell. If you don't know on the real real, be careful if you sell there, you guys, because they will aggressively mark your things down until it sells, which is great for them because they move the stuff. Good for you if they sell your stuff. But like, let's say originally, like here's a case in point, this Gucci diaper bag I sent them. I showed this to you guys a couple months ago. Initially, it was marked at $650 and they kept marking it down until it sold at 50% off and I made a profit of like $300. So... You have to watch your stuff because if it gets to a point where they've marked it down like 70, 80 percent, I wasn't watching my stuff at one point and a ton of shoes I had sent them like seven months before were selling and I was making like 10 bucks or five bucks. So watch your stuff because if they if it gets marked down to the point that you're not comfortable with it, just ask for your stuff back. Sell it yourself, sell it somewhere else, send it to ThreadUp. I was thinking about sending that to, to ThreadUp, but I feel like honestly... Uh, I might be able to sell this live, or if it doesn't sell live for the price I want, I can list it. I need to look at my SKU, um, but I'm going to try to sell this live for like maybe 70 bucks, which is a steal for this dress. It retailed for hundreds of dollars, um, and if it doesn't sell there, then I'll just list it. And the nice thing is, you guys, a little another tip from me to you, if you ever sell, send something to the real real or thread up, 99% of the time they put measurements, they'll put like a nice little description. You can literally just take that once you get your stuff back and put it into your listing. It's super easy, and then I just take my own photos. So tip for me to you for those of you that sell on the real real thread up any of those consignment shops make sure you take a, like a screenshot of the listing they created because then you have everything you need to just plug into your listing i mean why not so there's a lot more stuff here but now i'm like worried like how long have i been <laughs> anytime my camera is like um we're gonna stop this recording you've been talking a lot i'm like oh god how long is this video this is a dress um that one of my live selling buyers requested to see. So, little live selling update. I feel like I'm talking a lot, but you guys said you like it when I, it's so funny, like 90% of you love when I just ramble and drop little tips of information. There's always one person that's like, you talk too much. I'm not subscribing. And I'm like, well, bye. Cause everybody else told me to talk, okay? Um, my life my life selling buyers i always tell them and this is info for you guys if you ever come to my live sales that um anything you want in my closet is on sale because you're there live i really try to give a benefit because i want to grow my life selling audience that you know a benefit of you being here live is that i have almost a thousand listings on poshmark you want me to run anything for you i'll run it and i'll give you a discount sometimes i give a discount up to 50 percent off so one of my buyers kept coming in and she's like oh i really want to see this dress this is a lovers and friends dress sold at revolve this was like a limited edition dress that they did it was like four or five hundred bucks it's a size large but the problem is though sometimes people that are new will come in and be like oh can i see this dress i don't you guys know this because I've shown you my storage unit, but buyers don't know. You know, I don't keep all of my 1,000. I think I have 900 listings. I don't keep all 900 of my items in my small office in LA. So when I'm going live from here, I'm like, oh, I actually can't show it to you. It's in storage. That would be like a traditional Poshmark sale. Like you have to just look at the photos, look at the description. But the interesting, is, interesting thing is a lot of live selling buyers they want to see it live. They're like, well, I'm here. I want the benefit of seeing it live. It's like 50-50. Some people are like, all right, Nikki, just run it. And that way they get the bundled shipping, you know, because they've probably bought something. Like, let's say I've shown this dress live. They'll buy this. And then I'll run something that's in the closet that I can't show them, but that's listed. And then they get to bundle that together. Um, but then there's some people who are like, no, I, like, I would actually like to see it. So I did grab this for her because I'm going live this weekend. By the way, I always leave my live sales down below if I have some scheduled. And I always leave the listing. I've created a listing on Poshmark that if you like it, when I go live, I pin that listing and it'll notify you when I go live. So I always link those things down below if you want to come and check it out. So I grabbed this for her 
because she said she wanted to see it and I think she's coming to the live sale tomorrow and I think that's just good marketing to put like a really nice piece that just sits in the background of your live sale tip also it's really good to put something expensive back there because buyers are gonna be like ooh what's that like and you know people that are buying for themselves a lot of time they'll spend a lot of money I had one person that came into my live cell brand new had never seen me before literally spent eight hundred dollars in the live cell and now she's like one of my best customers so you never know you guys for those of you that live sell or just good marketing in general like at your Poshmark on the the top of your Poshmark closet try to put some of the nicest things possible because that's the first thing that people see you know and not even when I say nice I, I mean like nice for your audience it doesn't have to be super expensive stuff maybe you have like a really coveted brand or like a really unique item try to keep that at the top of your closet that's also part of the reason I keep like my really expensive wallets and like my purses behind me all the time so that they can see this stuff and then if they want to request it this is Chanel the other three are Louis so I'm like oh because someone last time was like oh what's that blue wallet I'm like oh that's Chanel and she was like well I can't afford it right now but like let me like the listing so it's good marketing I also keep my <laughs> Bedazzled Pam, you told me a word to call this. So I was commenting in the last video that I call it bedazzled. What did Pam say? Did she say call it jeweled? I already forgot, but <laughs> I keep my bedazzled faux Stanley back here in case anybody wants to buy that. So yeah, just a little marketing stuff. All right, you guys, I've talked. All right, friends, I thought we could discuss some things that are happening in the reselling world, what's going on with my reselling business, tips I can give you while I show you me going live, basically, and we'll go through some recent solds. This was a Poshmark live sale, and I'm basically showing them these new uh, sunglasses that I got in. So number one, this is your once- a video reminder. I told you guys I would try not to remind you too many times, but the NBC live sale is coming up on July 15th. If you don't know what I'm talking about, quickly, NBC. Yes, the NBC is coming to film me going live. It's basically a series on people that work full time, but also have a side hustle. And as you guys know, my side hustle is reselling. So they're going to come film me um, in my office doing a live sale. They're going to film me working my full time job. And then they're also going to film me um, processing a pallet in my storage unit. So if you are able to come to that live sale, I would really appreciate it. I will we'll link it down below. Right now I have a live sale scheduled on Poshmark and whatnot. I'm not sure where I'm going to go live. I'm thinking Poshmark, but I've just scheduled the, um, the live sale on both platforms and I will decide probably within the next couple of days. I told you guys I much prefer the tools and the software on whatnot. It's just more user friendly. You can run auctions super fast. You can do po you can do everything. There's a lot of features that you can do on whatnot that you can't do on Poshmark. But I am also aware that I have a bigger following on Poshmark uh, because I didn't take like a year off like I did on whatnot like I've been consistent on Poshmark for almost the last two years and whatnot I was consistent the first year literally going live three four times a week for a year and then I just stopped for a year so it's basically like for me starting over on whatnot so I don't know if that's the best move but I just thought I would promote it to you guys so that hopefully some of you can be there and support. And then the series is going to air on NBC on like a lot of their major NBC channels, Dallas, Austin, Los Angeles, New York, Oklahoma City. Um, it's going to air in the fall. So that is coming up. So I have always linked that down below if you could go and save that show. I also link my listing, you guys. Um, so if you're on Poshmark, if you like the listing, it'll notify you when I'm live. All right, enough about live sales. I have been getting a ton of question, questions from people that are just starting 
reselling, like very beginner questions, like how do I list on eBay? How do I set up shipping on eBay? How do I create a listing on Poshmark? I know to some of you that might sound silly because you've been reselling for so long, but we have a lot of new friends that are new resellers. So I'm going to start a series on my channel that is specifically, that word is always so hard for me to say, and it makes me realize I might have a slight lisp, so I really have to slow down because I always mix up specifically and Pacific. It's like when I want to say the Pacific Northwest, it sounds like specific. Any speech pathologists out there that can help me? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the only one that seems a bit tricky, that sounds tricky. Like when I hear it, I'm switching the words, so I really have to slow down. But these videos are specifically going to be for beginners. So some of you that have been reselling a long time, I don't know that you would want to watch those, but I just thought it would be helpful because you would be, well, maybe you wouldn't be surprised, but Almost daily, you guys, I get at least one or two questions that are very beginner specific questions, and I need to make videos for those people. Um, so, we're gonna have like a beginner's series on the channel. I totally understand if you've been, even if you've been reselling for a year, I don't know if they'd be helpful to you. Um, but I, I've been doing this for 14 years, and I just watched a beginner guide video. Um, yesterday from someone. I just find them interesting to see what people recommend in their business right now if you're a beginner. So that series is going to come up, going to be coming up. I'm going to probably do like one or one, probably one of those a week, maybe through the end of the year, because I just think it would be helpful for a lot of people that are newer to reselling. Can I be honest with you guys? I probably have not worn a crop top since I gave birth uh, before my second child. I'm losing weight right now. I'm fasting. I am working out. I'm doing all the things. So I was like, you know what? I'm tired of being super hot, being so like, <laughs> I get really warm, you guys. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to put on some shorts and a cute little crop top. It wasn't that cropped. It was only like, would show my tummy a little bit on the live sale. When I would like lift my arm, which you do a lot in the live sale, and looking at the footage, I feel like I, I felt a little self conscious wearing that, but I'm like, you know what, Nikki, you didn't look that bad. Like I said in the last video, we need to give ourselves credit, stop beating ourselves up. Maybe you don't do that, but I am like my worst critic. So looking back, I'm like, you know what, why were you self conscious? You looked just fine. Okay, girl, you've had two kids, it was 85 degrees out. <laughs> Anywho, so Beginner's Guide is coming. NBC is coming. Make sure you save those live sales that are coming up. All right, let's go through some recent sales. I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. This was not my best um, photography of an item. <laughs> this was a Zara. It was really cute. It was 100%. Did I put button or cotton? It's supposed to be 100% cotton. That is hilarious. I put a 100% button. Um, so the title was messed up and I thought the photo wasn't the best. Anyways, this uh, fit me. It was very cute. It um, It's very long, so I put tunic, but honestly, if you're shorter than I am, 5'6", you could probably wear it as a dress. I, for the life of me, could not find a stock photo for this item. You know how Zara, if you look at their tags, they have really long um, numbers on the tags. Sometimes if you plug those numbers into Google, you can find the stock photo. Cause I really was like, this needs a stock photo. Like it's hard for me without a mannequin or something or something to show how cute this is. It kind of cinched in at the waist. It had some nice, um, like ribbing detail, but it was hard to show that in the photo. Um, all that to say, I am very transparent with you guys. This was not my best photography work, but I struggled, like I said, to style this without a mannequin. This sold in less than a month, you guys. I tried to sell this on a live sale like 20 times. I will keep trying to sell something on a live sale that I particularly like, <laughs> and maybe that's just insanity or delusional. I don't know, but I kept showing this because I was like, I even tried it on. I was like, look at how cute this is, guys. Like, this is a great deal. Um, but nobody bought it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to list this. And if it doesn't sell, I'll just keep it because 
I can always use a little nice long 100% cotton white tunic slash dress. Um, so I listed it and it sold in less than a month, you guys, with this photo. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I am letting you know this just to say, like, sometimes if you feel like your photos aren't the best, just do the best you can, you guys. I think the lighting was good. I showed close up of the tags. I described it well. Um, yeah, so... I just, I always tell you guys, I keep it real. Not my best photography work, but this sold in less than a month. And I'm glad it's going to a new home because it is, I think it's very cute and it's very flattering once you put it on. All right, let's talk about some thread up sales. So you will see that these have not, oh, thread up is so annoying, you guys. <laughs> these have not paid out yet, even though purses, um, I did. I think I told you guys in the last video, I did actually reach out to ThreadUp. The easiest way that I've found to contact them is through their chat, you guys, during business hours um, on their website. You can chat with someone and you usually get an immediate response. So purses and purse accessories, that's what they called them, are final sale. So the customer cannot return them, which if you're a seller on ThreadUp, you know how amazing that is because returns on ThreadUp are pretty bad. Um... So back in the day, before ThreadUp started changing everything every five minutes, once an item was delivered to the buyer, you were paid immediately because it was final sale. But now they've changed that. So anything that's final sale, even though it's delivered to the buyer um, and they can't return it, you still don't get paid until the return window has passed. So so silly you guys so that's why I emailed the or I was talking to the chat because I was like hey you know I before I started sending them boxes again I haven't sent them like nice purses and wallets like designer stuff like you're seeing on the screen for a long time because I just got fed up with them so I reached out via chat and I was like what's going on these have been delivered when are they going to be paid out and that's when they told me oh like just what did they say for consistent consistency and payouts um, all final sale items are paid out to the seller just like items that are not final sale anyway so I should be getting paid for these tomorrow because they said basically you have to wait the 15 day return period even though the buyer can't return it so what sense does that make nonetheless these will be paying out tomorrow the Fendi satchel you can see it's giving me a payout of 134.25 the Gucci wallet is giving me a payout of 77.75. Huge profit on that Fendi. I got that Fendi for 25 bucks on ThreadUp. So I buy things on ThreadUp, you guys, and they send them right back to ThreadUp and resell them. Um, I'm gonna start talking about that in my sourcing group. So I've already talked about the sourcing group enough, but if you are interested in learning more about doing that, um, you might want to check out the sourcing group because I find things all the time for a deal on ThreadUp. That Fendi purse literally cost me like, it was like $26 and you can see what my payout is going to be. That's like a hundred and something dollar profit right there. And I didn't have to leave my house to get that. So, um, yeah, more info on that in the sourcing group. The Gucci wallet I actually sourced on Poshmark and it was a Poshmark share show, which I don't really buy from those, but this was such a good deal. And I had a ton of credit for having people sign up with my Poshmark link. So if you don't know, my description box is full of little gems, you guys. That's what I like to say anyways. I have a link where if you're new to Poshmark and you sign up, you get like a credit and then I get a credit that I can use to buy things on Poshmark. So I had a buildup of like a hundred bucks in credit and I was on a Poshmark share show and she was selling the wallet or she was an auction style. So the wallet I think I only paid $60, you guys, for this authentic Gucci wallet. I will say the buy, the seller did not disclose that it was damaged, which was very frustrating. Like, it had a ton of water damage inside, and she did not disclose that. It had, like, a lot of rippling on the leather, which usually happens when there's some kind of liquid damage. So that was annoying. I was going to actually sell that myself until I saw that undisclosed damage. So I was like, let me just let ThreadUp sell it. And they did actually do a good job. I will commend them. They do a much better job now 
of taking better photos, more detailed photos, and they do a really good do job of like saying in the description, this has signs of wear, and they actually did say there is some rippling in the leather. Um, it's a flawed gem, so they did a really good job of explaining that. All that to say, so technically this wallet, the $77.75 7, $77 payout is all profit because I didn't pay anything for this wallet. I got free Poshmark credits from you guys signing up using my link on Poshmark. Um, I think you have to make a purchase for me to get a credit. I believe that's how it works. If you're new to Poshmark, you use my link, you sign up, you get a credit towards your first purchase. And then once you purchase something, I think I get a small, it's a really small credit, you guys. It's like 10 or $15. It took me so long to get that $100 built up. But uh, so basically this is all profit because this wallet was free to me. I didn't really pay for it. I used money from, you know, the bonuses of you guys signing up. So I will take it all day. So I guess that's another benefit to my sourcing group. I don't really talk about that here because I'm like, I give you guys so much free, helpful information. There are some things that <laughs> I need to keep to myself or I should at least monetize because it's really a gem of information, patting my own self on the back. So that's another bit benefit to joining the sourcing group. There are certain things I'm going to start talking about in that group and some things I'm going to talk about in my email newsletter, then that's free, where uh, I don't really talk, I don't go into detail here, but I do a lot, a lot of sourcing on ThreadUp and The Real Real. And in the sourcing group, I actually provide links and tell you like, this is a good deal. Like in the sourcing group just yesterday, I found some Gucci heels, you guys, in great condition, newer style for $18 and they were authentic. $18. I, I sometimes I'll find Gucci shoes that are like really old styles. Like I'm talking like these shoes are from the seventies or eighties and I find them for like $60. So, uh, that was a steal of a deal. Someone already snagged that deal in the sourcing group. So those are the types of things that I talk about in the sourcing group. Another benefit to joining that link to it down below. So I wanted to give some updates on ThreadUp sales. For ThreadUp, you guys, I think I've told you many times, I am only sending them high-end stuff. So because of their new um, fee structure, because of their new, it's called like a Consignment Pro kit. You can see that on the screen. It says Consignment Pro. That seems to be the only kit that's worth my while, in my opinion right now. I'm not going to go into the details of what it is, you guys, because I don't know. They change their rules every five seconds. You can check out their website, but basically it's a new kit where you pay $15. I think it's $15 per item. Um, and you can control the price and things like that. You can control the description, but in my last kit, they didn't charge me that. So I don't know what's going on. I don't want to jinx it, but, um, that kit, you know, the fees are kind of high. So for me, in my, in my opinion, it's only worthwhile for me to sell there unless I can send them things like this, like high-end purses, accessories, high-end um, brand dresses, coats, like anything that will net me a profit of like $70 or more net profit to me, that's what I'm sending to them. I used to send them bulk. Like I used to send them quantity. Now it's more about quality. I'm sending them very small boxes. Like think Home Depot small box, like that small, just jam packed with stuff like this so that um, I can make a great profit because I, in all honesty, I don't find stuff like this all the time. So the goal would be, you know, to be able to send them like two to three boxes a month of stuff like this. But um, that's just not happening right now. I don't find a ton of stuff like this all the time, but I am sending them like one or two boxes a month right now, hoping to ramp that up probably like within the next month, because I do have a lot of liquidation coming. I do have a lot of stuff coming that I bought from ThreadUp that I'm going to send right back to them. So I would like to ramp this up for Q4 because there's nothing better than having inventory delivered to your house and then just shipping it right back out for someone else to sell it, especially when you're part-time, you guys, and you work full-time another job. 